All right, y'all, so I have been working a lot these past couple months, and my tackle bag has not been on my, on the, at the top of my priority list, sadly. Um, and I need to get back to that because I went fishing the other day and I noticed how disorganized it was and how out of stock at a certain, you know, with certain gear I was, like drop shot hooks, weights, etc. Um, just, you know, variety of different items. I just feel like I want to start from ground zero. This is an Orvis tackle bag. Um, I, I know I received it as a gift um, at some point within the past couple of years. Um, and it's, man, this is an awesome tackle bag. It's, you know, it's waterproof, etc. So you can go uh, wading and stuff. Uh, it's got the little water bottle thing on the side, but... You know, I have a variety of different flies on the outside, some that I tried to tie myself, and some woolly buggers. Most of the, a lot of these are hand-tied flies. Some of them I bought from, um, you know, other sources, so. We'll just pop this open. And, um, it's kind of stuffed with a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of items. But, man, it's just all over the place. I really don't know. I just want to reorganize everything, and just break everything down, and this is just a live, you know, I'm just gonna rip everything out, see what we got. Like this only has like, you know, two or three baits in there. I can kind of, these I never use, like I don't really need to even have those in there. This kit, man, I haven't touched this kit in a while either, so it's like, I really don't know, I just want to re- restructure my my tackle bag like these flukes are great this I'm gonna keep these but I feel like I can just go through this and break it down pocket cross kind of give you guys an idea of what I've been using oh man it's a beetle spin and um, it's a good color beetle spin too it's funny because I always keep beetle spins on me and never catch fish on them but I know they work I've only caught one fish on a beetle spin it was like a catfish or something like this like I have a strike king like redfish magic spinnerbait because I know it will work on bass I love the gold color and everything and it's just it's just like a you know saltwater spinnerbait there's no reason why you can't use that on bass I some, sometimes I get these things super cheap like these uh, the fat Albert green pumpkin yeah these things are awesome these little grubs. Put these on jigs, spinner baits. Uh, personally, I just throw these on drop shots and I, I swim them. So I've always been known to swim my drop shots. I always like to have something that you can use, uh, you know, stationary and then just reel it in and swim as well. So those are a really good key for drop shots. Like I keep this frog kit and never use it. Uh, for those old school subscribers of mine, you know the only time I frog fish, I use a lure. It's called Bart. Um, it's just a handmade lure. I don't think the guy even uh, uses. I don't even think he makes them anymore. So it's like, oh, speaking of the devil. So uh, these are my f probably like my favorite lure ever. This is kind of what got me into YouTube. Like my first YouTube video ever. I was reviewing a lure from. It's a handmade lure from uh, Skip. Uh, I think he's Rhode Island or something, somewhere up there north. But he used to make these frog lures with a mold and some sort of material. Uh, this one's Baby Bart, and then there's like, this one's shaped like a mouse. Single hook, I think it was an Eagle Claw, super sharp hook. And man, the first uh, first frog fish I have ever caught was on a Bart lure. And uh, yeah, they're all unique. They're all one of a kind. So that's what's really cool. This one, I've caught so many fish on it actually has battle scars. So this is like battled scarred Bart. I think I don't even remember the color, but these are really cool, man. This uh, so I've always I always had these on me. Uh, see, like, I I got like trash in here and stuff, man. Get refocused. Yeah, I got like trash at the bottom of the uh, tackle bag and stuff. So this is like a Berkeley trigger craw, some sort of like party fiesta color, drop shot weight to the bottom. So you, as you can see guys, like I really need to just clean this out, probably a good thing.
more Barts. So I think. Yeah, more Barts. This is like um, another baby Bart. These are the perfect size for around ponds around here. They're just like a little frog size. A little toad or something that's skipping along the shore. And um, this has got nice, you know, speckles on the belly, so uh, you can you can do so many things with these, man. Favorite favorite lures ever. What do I got here? Yeah, this is all just stuff that's just tossed in there. So we got a chatterbait with that green pumpkin grub. This wreck shot, man. I caught a man, the last fish I caught with this was a crappie. Really big slab crop going after this at a local pond. Not too bad. Good setup right there. Like I'll keep that on there and use it again. What else we got? Oh, I'm hooked. That's the other thing too. Like I need to clean this out because you don't need loose tackle in your tackle bag. So let's just say you went, you didn't, un, you know, you weren't aware. That a, a certain hook was in there. You don't want to go in there and get hooked on your own like tackle. Cause ooh, these are amazing little pond and like creek bangers right here. Little strike king, mini kings, and the micro kings are fucking. Oh man, excuse my language, but those are bangers. And especially that white and pink with dirty, like in a dirty muddy water. That pink and white combo, that single Colorado blade, really put on a lot of a lot of visibility and a lot of thump. Yeah, I got like spinner baits in there that are all hooked up and stuff, so what is this? Oh, there we go. A Fenwick buff. Always keep a buff on you or some sort of hank, like a handkerchief or something. So yeah, you guys get the idea. Um, I, ge I guess we'll just consider this like a part one. I want to make this a multi-part series because I need to go through and restructure what I need um, and just think about exactly what kind of arsenal I want to put back in this Orbis tackle bag. So, um, man, yeah, consider this part one. It's just like a bunch of random baits and um, it is what it is, you know? <laughs> this is just what I have on me. Maybe that's the reason why my fishing trips have been going the way they've been going because my tackle bag is not put together the way it needs to be. So I want to thank you guys for just uh, hanging out with me and doing this little live strip down of my Orvis tackle bag. Uh, this will be part one, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Texas Rig, out.